In today's video, we're going over the clinical examination of patellofemoral pain. This is wrong. This is wrong. Did you do this? So patellofemoral pain is gonna be the most common form of knee pain treated in outpatient clinics. Makes up almost 25% of all injuries you'll see as a physical therapist in outpatient setting. The other piece about patellofemoral pain is it doesn't have a great natural history. We even have some research to show that in patients that were treated with physical therapy, exercises for their quads, when they're followed up on about five to six years after they've had their rehab, about 75% of these folks still have pain. So it doesn't revert to the mean very well like other pathologies do. Obviously, it's just important that we diagnose this well because the way you treat patellofemoral pain is a little bit different than the way you treat other knee injuries. So who commonly acquires patellofemoral pain? Well, this is common across our entire lifespan. A lot of populations will get this, but it's gonna be a little bit more common in your runners, as well as adolescents and young adults. So folks between the ages of about 12 and 19, usually participating in some sort of sport. One of the key indicators that your patient has patellofemoral pain is they usually have anterior knee pain. So if their pain is on the side, either on the inside, the outside, or the back, you're not thinking patellofemoral pain. It has to be somewhere through the front side. The other piece about patellofemoral pain is it's usually pretty diffuse and sometimes it moves. If someone has patellar tendinopathy, they're gonna say, hey, I have pain right on this location right here. When people have patellofemoral pain, oftentimes it's somewhere deep to the knee or around the knee. So it could be on the inside, the outside of the kneecap, or it could be right underneath of the kneecap, but it moves a lot and it's not always just in one spot. Generally, it hurts with activities that load the patellofemoral joint. So think about your squatting, you're running, going downstairs. Those activities load the joint. They should be painful during your examination. And from a mechanism of injury standpoint, usually there's a gradual onset. If your patient comes in, says they were playing soccer, they twisted, they felt kind of a pop within their knee and they had a bunch of swelling, I am not thinking patellofemoral pain. Usually patellofemoral pain comes on gradually and worsens over the course of time. Although sometimes folks can be doing some sort of athletic maneuver, end up with a lot of anterior knee pain, and that could be the start of patellofemoral pain. Although what we wanna make sure is that we're not missing other major diagnoses that are treated differently. You know, my patients keep telling me that they have pain right behind the kneecap. Hurts when they squat, hurts down the stairs. I think it's patellofemoral pain. What the hell does the research say about patellofemoral pain? PubMed.com, all right, there we go. Okay, excellent, there's 335,000 studies to read. Ah, gosh, too much, I'm getting frustrated. Whoa, calm down, no need to be frustrated. This is Dan Pope, and I have fabricated what I believe is the perfect solution to your problem. It is the patellofemoral pain, evidence-based cheat sheet. And I'll catch you up to date on patellofemoral pain under 10 minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, that's actually pretty helpful because I'm kind of dumb and I don't like to read. Well, don't you worry, I'm dumb too. But when it comes to patellofemoral pain, I am not. We're gonna go over all the greatest hits. Definition, anatomy, what the heck is the pain generator? Are there any risk factors for this condition? What's the prevalence and clinical presentation? How about mechanisms of injury? Differential diagnosis? How you even go about diagnosing this? And then our favorite evidence-based treatment. So that's my promise. I'm gonna get you up to date on patellofemoral pain under 10 minutes. I'll leave a link below in the show notes in the description. Go ahead and click on that link and get to learning. From an objective standpoint, patellofemoral pain is a diagnosis of exclusion. And essentially what this means is that when you have a patient come through the door, you wanna rule out more serious pathology or other pathologies. And if the patient's still left with some sort of anterior knee pain, hurts while loading the patellofemoral joint, we start thinking, seems like patellofemoral pain. So how do we go about doing this? Well, here's a few tasks I like to use. First, I like to check range of motion. So let's say that Jackson comes in, he's got this pain on the right side leg. I wanna rule out more serious pathologies. So first thing I'm gonna try to do is fully straighten the leg and see if that reproduces Jackson's pain. Next, I wanna fully bend the knee and see if that reproduces the patient's pain. So generally speaking, when folks have patellofemoral pain, it doesn't hurt to move the leg passively, although some folks at the end, of, end ranges of knee flexion can have a bit of pain, but largely this should be pain-free when we do this. Next thing I like to do is check a little bit on the inside and the outside of the joint by doing some joint line testing. So on the inside, right in the joint line, outside, right in the joint line as well. 
So what I'm ruling out here is potential pathology of the tibial femoral joints, so let's say the meniscus on the medial or lateral side. If they're having like, let's say an MCL sprain, maybe I'll be able to pick that up a little bit right through here. Same thing on the outside, we're making sure that person doesn't have IT band syndrome or some sort of lateral meniscus tear, right? If you wanna get fancy, you can start incorporating some more meniscus tests. So I might go up and I might try to do some McMurray testing, so either biasing a little bit of internal rotation, external rotation, back and forth, see if I'm producing any symptoms there. The other giveaway is gonna be swelling. Folks that have patellofemoral pain generally don't have swelling. If you look through some research, they'll say that there can be minimal swelling in some patients, but I very rarely see that. I can't tell you any time that someone's had swelling within the knee that I thought it was due to just patellofemoral pain, right? Maybe there's some arthritis or something else secondary to that. So to assess and see if there's any sort of swelling, we can very easily just sweep the knee. So I start on the inside by the patella, sweeping up, I sweep down, I go on the outside of the joint, sweep up, sweep down. I like to poke around a little bit. You can poke on the outside of the joint. Sometimes I'll push the fluid to the inside. You can do the other side, push medially, see if you have any fluid going to the outside. Now sometimes I've picked up what I think is swelling, then I just go to the other side and I start poking around and that really does look normal. So just make sure you're not fooling yourself into thinking someone has swelling just because it seems a little puffy on one side, but it's equally as puffy on the other and they don't have any injuries on the other side. Next, we wanna do a little bit of palpation of those anterior structures. When people have anterior knee pain, that could be a couple of different things. So I tend to see a lot of patients have a quad tendinopathy. So if the patient's pain is above the kneecap, somewhere through here, and they can kind of pinpoint it and say, yeah, this, is the re this is the area right here where it hurts me all the time. I'm starting to think maybe this is more of a quad tendinopathy. If I start going down and I get to the bottom part of the patella, I start palpating through the patellar tendon, and the patient says, yep, my pain is right on this area. I'm thinking this is more of a patellar tendinopathy. And if I keep going, especially in those younger athletes, and I go down to the tibial tuberosity, and I'm, I'm finding their pain is mostly in this area, I may start thinking this is Osgood Schlatter's syndrome. Another thing you can do with patellofemoral pain from a palpation perspective is to poke around the patella on the medial side as well as the lateral side. And if you're starting to pick up some irritation here and the patient says, yep, my pain is kind of below the kneecap, maybe a little bit more on the inside, a little more on the outside, and when I poke on the side of the patella, that's what hurts, I'm starting to think this seems a little bit more like patellofemoral pain. So largely, like what I was saying, patellofemoral pain is a diagnosis of exclusion, but what you should certainly not exclude is going to this video, hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and then commenting for the algo. So patellofemoral pain tends to hurt with activities that load the patellofemoral joints. When your patient's in front of you, we should probably do that and see if it aggravates them. A couple exercises you can choose, just a standard squat. So go ahead and set up, feet shoulder width, squatting down, come right back up again. Any pain with that? Okay, generally speaking, you'll find that as athletes descend down, it usually hurts more and more on the way down. Every once in a while when they get to the very bottom, sometimes the pain goes away a little bit, but largely as you descend into the squat, the patellofemoral joint forces go up and the pain should kind of go up, up, up. Another movement you can check is gonna be a split squat or a lunge. Let's go ahead and split that stance, go ahead down. Any pain through here? Good, and let's have you stand back up again. And lastly, we'll just try a single-legged squat. So I'll bounce on one leg, go ahead and squat down for me. Good, and take a breather. So one of the things to think about is that a squat is double leg, should be a little less stress to the patellofemoral joint than a single-legged squat. Sometimes you might not pick up on any pain or maybe just a little bit in the squat. When you go to the single-legged squat, like, oh yeah, that hurts more. So something to keep in mind. Next, we're gonna look at manual muscle tests. I just largely recommend that whenever you're doing manual muscle testing, you try to use a handheld dynamometer and be as objective as possible when you're doing this. So the first thing we're gonna look at is gonna be knee extension strength. And two things. So for one, this is often provocative because when we do knee extension, it is gonna put some strain through the patellofemoral joint, right? So you can take your handheld dynamometer, place it right at the ankle here, go ahead and kick out against me here, Jackson. Awesome, great work. And now, we'll end up going on your side. Next, we're gonna be checking hip abduction and hip extension strength. There is some research to show that folks with patellofemoral pain will acquire weakness after they have patellofemoral pain. We don't have research to show that people are weak and that causes patellofemoral pain, right? Just so you know, when people get patellofemoral pain, it seems that they become weak afterwards. So we're gonna have Jackson lay on his side, straighten out this leg right through here. I'm gonna put my handheld dynamometer on the ankle, bring up the leg to about, yep, level with the hip. Go ahead and push up nice and strong, push, 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 and then relax. So again, we wanna make sure that we check both sides and in folks that have patellofemoral pain, the involved side may be a little bit weaker. From here, let's have you flip onto your belly. We'll do hip extension. 
And there's a lot of ways to measure this, but this is how I tend to do it. So largely, we're just gonna bend at the knee, just like so. I'm gonna take the handheld dynamometer, place it at the hamstring, right uh, above the knee. And from here, go ahead and kick up nice and strong to the ceiling. Jackson, good, push, 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 and then relax. And we'll check side to side, and you may find that the involved side is a bit weaker. Next, I like to do a movement analysis, and we can look at a variety of different movements. So the big ones to look at would be something like a single-legged squat, a step-down task, or some sort of hopping, right? We're gonna show you a step-down task. So when folks that have patellofemoral pain, they generally move a little bit less through the knee. So if they go to squat, they don't wanna move through the knee because it hurts, so it'll kind of send the hips back. And they also tend to move a little bit more through the hip joint. So when they do something like a step-down task, you'll notice they get hip drop on one side, the reason being is probably because the knee feels like garbage, it hurts a lot, they don't want to use it, so they try to use a different strategy to get the heel down to the floor. Let's have Jackson show first a normal step down. So we'll stand up nice and tall, tapping that heel. What you'll notice, and you can't see it from the side here, but let's have you spin and just face, yep, that's good. Let's use that right side leg so people can see. Good, yep, and you'll see how as he steps down, the knee is transferring forward, right? And then we're watching from the front, we didn't see the hip drop tremendously and folks have patellofemoral pain, knee hurts, let's go ahead and show a repetition where you really try to move through that hip, a little less through that knee. You'll see this maneuver, okay? So essentially, Jackson is trying not to move through the knee, he's dropping that hip so he can get down to the floor without aggravating, right? Let's go ahead again from the side. So same thing you can see. So Jackson will try to touch the floor, but he ends up sending those hips back, and he also ends up dropping that hip so he doesn't bother the knee. All right, so now you have a pretty solid understanding of the diagnosis or clinical examination of patellofemoral pain. If you want a deep dive on patellofemoral pain, I have just the thing for you. I leave a link in the corner, go and click on that, and we'll go over what physical therapists need to know about patellofemoral pain. This is wrong. Dude, just click on that link, all right?